face. But Chris, my problems are real. So is the sun. When you go for a walk outside, do you stare at the sun? No, you pick what you're supposed to look at. And Frank said, and Frank, think of all the beauty still left around you and be happy. Guys, what excuse do you have? What do you think about? Where do you fix your heart and mind? In the Lord of the Rings, there's this thing called the Palantir, this stone that you could look at and see the mind of Sauron, see the evil one. You know what's amazing about the Palantir? Good people, if they look at it for too long, will lose their souls to Sauron. They give into the plan of darkness because it overwhelms them. Your cell phone? Palantir. Your news feed, Twitter, Palantir. You guys, don't spend time obsessing on all the horrible things happening in the world. Spend time obsessing on the Word of God. The first Christians, if you read the things that they wrote, the things that they did, they weren't obsessing on all the bad things Nero was doing. They were too busy thinking about the good things God was doing. I'm not saying to bury your head in the sand. I'm not saying to disengage from politics. All that's important. But saints are saints not because they fill their minds with what they hate, but because they're primarily filled with what they love. Give thanks in all circumstances. I'm going to give you a couple practical tips, tips for when I give thanks. One, as soon as I wake up in the morning, before my eyes open, I start to give thanks to God. See, because right then, my brain starts to do its job. Keep Chris alive. Find all the problems and threats of the day. That's why if you wake up too early, you can't get back to sleep. It's your brain doing its job. So I start to redirect my thoughts to thoughts of gratitude. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for the breath I just took. Thank you for the feet that are running down the hall to get to my prayer already. Because they won't be there for long. Thank you. Then I hit the ground ready to be a blessing rather than a stressed out mess. Amen? And then two, I want you to expect it. Can you do that, by the way? You've got these, these stupidly simple things will change your life if you do that. And then two, I want you to retrain your triggers that when you're aggravated, when you feel down, when you feel like the world is weighing you down, you do what St. Paul said to do from his prison cell when I'm sure he was being weighed down by the concerns of the world, rejoice. In those times, I want you to start praising and thanking God. And why? Because that's the most urgent thing you need to do in the face of your problems. Joy has to be your strength. Joy has to be your strength. Dang, I'm depressed about the lack of time. Two, I need you to live a friendship rich life. What's number two? Okay, this one's not easy at all because people are really annoying. Yes, we hurt people all the time, and we're hurt by people all the time, and usually they don't even know it. My uncle Paul was walking through New York City, and a jogger went, went ran by him and bumped into him, and he reached in his pocket, and his wallet was gone. And he saw the guy running away. He ran up to the guy and said, give me the wallet. Because wild gives to him. He calls his wife, Margie, you'll never believe what just happened to me. She said, Paul, your wallet's on the kitchen table. Spiritually healthy, so we can grow up to God. That's why He made so many of us. That's why we're here right now to 
together. I'm just watching this on Zoom. And friendship is essential for the renewal of the church. The more I dig into this, the more I realize kind of we're giving work to helping people start friendship groups where they get together and share their faith. This is also the secret sauce for focus. This is the secret sauce of Franciscan University Super Bowl where I went for college. Woo. It's half, it's a household system. It's the key to renewal in the church. Saddleback Community Church, they grew from 6,000 small groups to 9,000 small groups during COVID. Guys, there's no reason Catholic churches can't do that. If there's a secret sauce to evangelical churches that are growing in leaps and bounds, it's not just great preaching. It's that everyone is involved in small group ministry, so when they meet an interested friend, they know where to invite them. The front porch to Christianity is not your local mass. The front porch is your group of friends. Amen? I need you to do what I do. I need you to be part of this renewal. Meet with people. Meet every couple weeks or meet every month. And check in spiritually. How are you? The life-changing, community-forming question. What's God doing in your life? How can I pray for you? There's resources to help this happen. There's things like the search. There's all sorts of stuff we're producing in Real Life Catholic. Frankly, I don't care if you use any of the resources. They're a crutch to get started. I need you to be connected with people. I need you to form groups that you can actually invite people to if we're going to renew the world and if you're going to stay a joyful Christian. And then finally, for lack of time, I need you to frame your mind. Frame how you see life, how you see all of reality with your faith. Everything we do as Catholics goes into helping us do this as we process, as we approach our everyday life. This is from Colossians 3 2. St. Paul again wrote this before his cancellation. Set your mind on things above, not on things of earth. <sighs> so, you guys, he didn't just think about the faith, he saw himself in light of the faith. If you read Ephesians, which also he wrote from prison, he didn't write, you know, dear Ephesians, I, Paul, a prisoner of Rome. No, I, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. I know who I am. I know what life is about. I am blessed, chosen, loved, lavished, all these things in the first chapter of Ephesians. Why? He saw himself and his circumstances in light of the frame that the faith gives us. What is that frame? The frame of our faith. A frame that nothing else competes with, that no other worldview has remotely compared with in 2,000 years, 